Lancashire BME Network and Galloways present Building Confidence After Lockdown. Uh, welcome everybody, uh, my name is Stuart, I'm the Community Outreach at Galloways, but I'll f firstly pass you on to Jackie from Lancashire BME Network. Oh, thank you, Stuart. And a uh, big welcome to you all. Um, we've already done one session this morning um, with the ladies and it went really, really well. Um, so I'm going to encourage you all. Um, this is all about building confidence today. So I'm going to encourage you all um, to speak out. If you've got any questions uh, for any of us, um, just, you know, wave your hand and um, and speak out and we can uh, we can, uh, you know, answer any questions that you've got. So today's session, um, we have two amazing uh, speakers uh, who are going to talk about building confidence. Um, a, a lot of people have lost confidence the last nine months, but I would uh, imagine particularly if you're visually impaired or any um, disability, actually, today is Disability Awareness Day, and um, we want more people to be aware of the difficulties um, that people face, um, and particularly today, it's about uh, being visually impaired. So, uh, Joe LeBefort and Zoe Dawes um, are going to talk us through some really helpful tips, some things that we can do in everyday life. Um, and this is not this is not just for Christmas, folks. This is uh, to continue for the rest of your life. These are things that actually I use in my life, um, but they really, really do help. So, uh, yeah, it'd be absolutely um, great if you can use these tips. So I'm really uh, pleased and proud to be co-hosting this with Galloway's Charity. Galloway's Charity is an amazing charity and they have so many services uh, to help the visually impaired. So anybody on today who, who's not uh, part of Galloway's and, and need their help, or indeed, if you've got a family member, friend or somebody that you know that might need the services please please um get in touch and um, because that's what we're here for today to put out uh, the awareness of what help and what services there are there so uh, i'm the well-being manager for lancashire bme network and we do lots of courses and um today um, is just about really building awareness and um, Joe and Zoe um, are a couple of our um, coaches that we use and next year 2021 can you believe it um, less than a month we're going to be there I think uh, most of us will be glad to get into that year but um, we've got lots of things planned for next year and you're all invited um, so we do have a confidence building course, course sorry, with Zoe and we have a nutrition course with Joe. Um, there's so much uh, information um, that you can find out. And just being in a Zoom and, and a group environment, um, not only will you make new contacts, new friends, um, but it will just give you the confidence uh, and the help that we need right now. Um, other things that we do at Lancashire BME, there's, there's lots of um, different projects we've got going at the moment. And next year in January, I'm launching and promoting men's well-being. Um, I really think um, that's very, very, it's, any well-being is important, let's face it. But men's well-being is something I really want to look at because there is a massive stigma um, on uh mental health but I really want to promote that we all have mental health um we all have physical health we all know about that and uh, we all know sometimes our physical health isn't great but in the same way mental health is the same and uh, you know sometimes we just don't feel great and if your mental health isn't good I can almost guarantee to you that your physical health will go hand in hand so I'm an holistic therapist and um, I run the well-being programs here in a very holistic way because my firm belief that what I've just said, your mental health and your physical health is uh, all connected. Um, so if you're not feeling great, you're feeling down, uh, you know, like we all do, we all do from time to time, then um, our body releases certain chemicals that will react to you know physical illness so it's really important that we look after our head 
and uh, you know how we're feeling it's not that easy is it at the moment um, and I'm particularly I think if you are visually impaired you've had to um, jump over so many obstacles so uh, we're here to help and um, we will be promoting uh, the different courses we have um, for the new year. We really hope that you will join us or anybody that you know uh, will join in with these courses um, because they're free <laughs> and you can't get better than that. Um, and we really want to, to get it out there as much as we can. Um, for the men's launch, um, it's going to be um, Stop Stigma and break the silence. And, and that's really what I'm aiming at is to build awareness uh, that we should all be talking Talking is a great thing. And, um, um, you know, a lot of people are very afraid to open up about what's bothering them. Um, somehow it, they think it's a weakness. It's not. It's a strength. It's absolute strength when you can talk out. Um, so, you know, I'm going to move on now. And Joe um, is going to give us some enlightenment and uh, tell us a few tips that we all might find useful. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Jackie. And uh, just to say, uh, I popped onto one of uh, Jackie's events yesterday in the Lancashire uh, BA, BAE, and it was about uh, growing herbs, and I find it fascinating. It was uh, brilliant. So yes, uh, there are some great courses in there. So my name is Jo Lefferbaugh. I'm a certified health coach, nutritionist, and a hypnotherapist. So I really come from a whole holistic way of treating, not your, just your body, but your mind, and obviously your whole self. So today, I really want to kind of first of all, share a little PowerPoint that I've put together to help you. So first, before I do that, I have to share my screen. And can you see that, uh, Stuart? Wonderful. So um, this PowerPoint is just got an image of a lock at the front of it because it's building confidence after lockdown. And we would be absolutely living on a different planet if we didn't you know, accept that this lockdown, this 2020 has really caused us so much disruption in our lives, hasn't it? It's really tested it in so many different ways. And um, I don't think we'd be human if we said that it hadn't impacted us in some shape or form, even if you've been, you know, lucky enough to be, you know, maintain your health throughout this and maintain your relationships with friends and family, it will have still disrupted our life in some shape or form. And through this lockdown, we've actually been forced to stay at home so much more. So this slide, I've just put a picture of a house and I've put safe at home because it has become like our cocoon, hasn't it? It's come like our place where even though we've been kind of restricted and told that we have to stay at home a lot more, um, after a while, we've become conditioned to actually stay in these four walls with a really small amount of bubble of people that we're allowed to kind of move around frequently see. And after a while, it can really impact our confidence of actually stepping out of that door, stepping out, experiencing life again, getting back to how you used to be. Um, but obviously, if we carried on just feeling like this home is our only safe bubble, then it can really impact our mental health and our physical health because we do need to get outside and get that fresh air into our lungs and to really experience life again. Um, these restrictions will eventually be listed, uh, lifted, won't they? And what we need to do is know that we've got these skills and these tips that we can use to give us the confidence to get back out into the, the world again. And uh, this image on this slide is of just somebody flexing their muscle because it is just about rebuilding a muscle because before this lockdown, you were getting on with your lives and you are still able to do that. It's just this muscle memory that we need to kind of tap back into. And my main thing is this slide is just showing 
two people, a man and a woman, uh, but it's just to encourage you to remember who you are. Because before all this lockdown, before all this, you know, tested, tested in so many different ways, I want you to just tune into when you felt your most confident self. And you might just want to just take a moment now to just relax and just tune inside yourself and to just remember and visualize and picture yourself and feel how you were your best self, your most confident self and search around and you can step back into those kind of ways that you were the way that you held yourself, the confidence you had, because that part of you is still there. It is still there. We just need to kind of unwrap a few layers to let that part of you, that best self of you back out again. And this slide has just got a picture of a no entry side, like a stop sign, because I'm encouraging you to try to stop comparing yourself with others. Everyone has dealt with this virus, this uh, pandemic in a different way. And it doesn't mean that your way, your way is, you know, wrong or in any way, shape or form, you know, to be judged. Don't even judge yourself. We're all on our own journey. And what we're trying to do is to say not to compare. Social media at the moment has obviously been the outlet for so many people. But we know on social media that people are showing their best selves. They're very rarely expressing, you know, the downs that they're feeling. So sometimes if we're just observing other people's lives and thinking, oh, how is it that they've managed to learn a new language during lockdown? <laughs> or they've managed to achieve X, Y and Z. And I've just struggled to even get out of bed every day. Whatever it is, do not <coughs> compare yourself with those people. This is your journey, isn't it? And then this slide is just showing a happy smiley face. And what I've put on is happy chemicals. And what do you think I mean by this? Your body is amazing at producing chemicals, chemical reactions. We call them hormones. And our hormones send really strong, powerful messages, which our bodies respond to. And during this state of lockdown, we've been in maybe states of stress, uh, anxiety, fear, and that can really lower the serotonin and the dopamine levels that impact the way that we think, the way that we feel. And these chemical reactions are really strong and they can actually make you crave certain foods. And so I'm not surprised at all that so many people reach out to me and say, Joe, I've put two stone on over lockdown. Because people are reaching out for those comfort foods, which give them that lift, give them that <coughs> mental high. But unfortunately, if we keep reaching out for those kind of sugary, toxic foods, they actually shrink the brain. And if we shrink the brain and we widen the waistline, <laughs> It actually means that your serotonin levels and your dopamine levels shrink down lower. So you're in a spiral of having to reach out for these foods to give you that buzz, that lift again. And that's um, obviously in a long term way that's just going to really impact your mood, impact your confidence, because somebody who's struggling with a low serotonin, a low dopamine levels, it's been linked to fear it's been linked to you know somebody who's feeling pessimistic who's feeling that they have no confidence whereas if you can get your serotonin and dopamine levels at a more healthier balanced they've been linked to people who are feeling optimistic feeling that they can achieve something the messages that you're saying to yourself the stronger more positive kinder messages that you have to yourself so how can we raise those levels well by crowding out the toxic foods i I'm, I'm passionate about helping people to kind of tame your sugar monster i call it 
and I run people through a program helping them to shift the sugar cravings and to crowd out with really healthy good foods. But it's not just crowding out with good foods, it's also really thinking about things that will make you smile. And I've got a picture here of a TV and it says watch less TV or listen less to TV or radio or whatever it is, where it's giving you that negative message every day. We know that the mass media seem to repeat negative messages to us all the time. So that can really impact the way that we're thinking and we're feeling about the outer world. And it can really impact our, yeah, our feelings of happiness if we're feeling that everything out there is doom and gloom. So that's one of the things that I encourage you to kind of turn, turn it off, try not to listen to it as much. And then obviously always thinking about caring for your gut. Your gut is where all the serotonin is actually created. Eight tenths of your serotonin is created in your gut. It then travels up to the brain. So what we really need to do is to think about how we can care for our gut, which is meaning giving it good, healthy foods, but also really hydrating yourself, but reducing stress levels. You might even want to take a good probiotic because a good probiotic can really work wonders by repopulating your gut and that will really lift your mood as well. And so what we're going to do now is just think about positive messages that you can give yourself. I've called it positive affirmations. And there's just a symbol there of like a microphone speaker. And positive affirmations, if you've never done them before, can feel a bit strange at the beginning. But all a positive affirmation is, is you kind of saying in a positive way, something that you're already wanting to achieve, but imagining that you've already done it but not something like, oh, I'm a millionaire and I love it every day. <laughs> it's kind of a step where you know that you're improving each and every day. So I've suggested one for you here. My confidence is increasing day by day. And if you just want to say that to yourself each and every day, my confidence is increasing day by day. That can really kind of put you in a different positive frame of mind and you might not feel that that sentence is appropriate to you you can think of your own positive affirmation maybe yours is one where you're really wanting to kind of feel more confident at speaking to people um, outside so yours could be something like um, I easily meet and speak to people each and every day something like that would mean that you're putting yourself in that positive state of knowing that this is what you want to achieve and taking that out and believing that you can do it. It puts your mind in that positive state. But the next image I've got here is a pair of lungs breathing. Because breathing and really tuning into your breath can be so good for reducing your cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone. And it can control your whole physiology. So if you're starting to feel nervous or anxious and your adrenaline is pumping because you're feeling that you've hit something that like you've really kind of feeling fearful or anxious of something, what we can do is just pause and tune into our breath. And before you know it, that whole stress hormone cannot possibly be in your body if you are breathing in a deep and relaxed way. So I'm going to teach you how to do that now. So first of all, I would like you just to put your hands on your chest and just close your eyes and just tune in to how you are naturally breathing right now. Just feel what part of your body is raising and what is happening in your body. And then I just want you to remind yourself of a time that maybe you felt anxious 
And just remember that sometimes your body physiology, the adrenaline pumping, will make you take shorter, quicker breaths, which are coming from the chest. Rapid breathing. And it's short and it's encouraging you to feel stressed. It's like that kind of adrenaline is the way that that fight or flight and you can run away from something. But what we want to do is change that physiology. And so now I want you to move your hands onto your tummy, onto your stomach. And this is where we're going to do the deep breathing. So I want you to take a big deep breath in, but I want you to be, imagine that your, your stomach is a balloon and that you're filling up your stomach with that fresh oxygen. Are you ready? You do it in your own time, but just breathe in. And I just re realize that your hands are being pushed out as your belly is being filled up with the oxygen. And then just let it go. And you'll notice the difference that you can do a short breath from your chest, or you can do deep breaths from your stomach. And that is where your physiology is changing. And what I like to do is to teach people that there's methods for so many different techniques. If you're new to deep breathing, you might feel like you can only hold your breath for four seconds. So what we're going to do is breathe in for four seconds, watch your stomach and maybe feel your stomach being pushed out for four. And then you're going to hold it for four. And then you're going to breathe out for four, pushing that air out. And then you're going to pause for four before you take in your next breath for four. So I want you to imagine it's like a square and you're thinking in for four, hold for four, release for four, pause for four. And if you can get into that pattern of doing that kind of breath, it can really relax you and put you in a different frame of mind. But after you've got an experience of doing deep breathing for a level of four, maybe you can see if you can hold it for a bit longer. What I do is tend to do it for seven. So if you breathe in for seven and hold it for seven, which might feel a long time, but when you're breathing out, I really want you to imagine that you're breathing out quite loud. So you're breathing in, holding it. And when you're breathing out, you... And you'll notice a huge difference if your whole physiology which will really encourage your body to calm down and to feel more relaxed, which will enable you to kind of achieve that activity or that goal or that what you wanted to do. So I'm hoping that um, helps everybody. So I just want to kind of quickly cover what I said. First of all, remember who you are, celebrate who you are, really kind of knowing that inside you're still that person even though this whole lockdown has kept you away from achieving or mixing with who you usually used to mix with and just know that you know through this there's always positives that can come out isn't it I know that you know sometimes we've had a crazy rush to life rushing from one thing to the next thing. And this has obviously helped to slow down a little bit, but it's giving you that opportunity to tune into something that you really want to achieve. And then the other thing was like making sure that we're feeding ourselves well. I know it's so tempting to, whilst you're stuck at home, to have that biscuit tin and your hand keeps going in that biscuit tin. But if you can just start crowding out, I'm not saying you have to stop eating sugar, but the more we can crowd out those kind of foods, the more you'll realise the less you want them when your serotonin levels start lifting. And especially when you're starting to do things that make you happier. And then you've got the two tips of the positive affirmations, finding something, a sentence or a phrase that you want to repeat to yourself, record it on your phone and wake up 
listening to that each and every day. And then your deep breathing will really help you to calm down any time that you're feeling that adrenaline and that fear rushing around your body. Okay, thank you. I'll hand back to Jackie. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. That was lovely. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel really relaxed and totally chilled out. Um, that's something I do every morning as I start my day. Um, so I want to start my day off right. Uh, and I tend to think if I don't do it, um, it doesn't it doesn't flow very well. Start your day off well. And whenever you're feeling stressed at all, it's a really good exercise to do. So we've got the lovely Zoe Dawes now, um, who's going to um, tell us a little bit more how we can help ourselves. Thank you, Jackie. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks very much to Jackie and Stuart for inviting me to join you today to share a few tips on uh, building on what Jackie has said, uh, Joe has said uh, on helping you to get more confident, uh, particularly in your head, the way you're thinking, um, but also in what you do as we move into what is going to be a very strange time, I think. As we go now, we, we've heard, haven't we, that we're the first country in the world to have the vaccine approved and uh, uh, so it's going to mean that it will start to be rolled out uh, after Christmas, well, before Christmas, in fact. And then, um, yeah, then we're almost being, going to start to be given permission to get out and about more. And, and I think actually in some ways that's going to challenge us more because as Joe has said, we've been stuck at home for a long time. Uh, some of us living on our own, some of us enforced, um, it, being enforced into close proximity with other people, which has put challenges on relationships. Um, so we do need to feel confident enough to be able to start to uh, get back into, well, it's not, it's not going back, is it? It's into whatever the new world is looking like. And when we're feeling confident in ourselves, we're able to trust our own abilities and our judgments. And it's really important for our physical and mental health that we do have that confidence. And I thought I would just share with you a definition of what confidence is because we talk a lot about it and lots of people have different ideas. But this uh, quote is from Rosabeth Moss Cantor, who is a, an American um, coach and mentor. And she says, confidence isn't optimism or pessimism, and it's not a character attribute. In other words, we're not born confident. She says, what it is, is the expectation of a positive outcome. So in other words, when we believe that things are going to go okay, then we will feel more confident. And uh, we were talking about this at the beginning of when we did the first session today, because uh, well, I was uh, last night, you know, I didn't sleep perhaps as well as I might have because I was thinking, oh, what's it going to be like tomorrow? You know, first time doing this workshop um, in this way. And um, but what I did to get my confidence going was I ran through all the what ifs. What if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? Um, in other words, looking at worst case scenario and then thinking, well, actually, you know, the world's not going to fall apart. We're all human. We're all fallible. We all make mistakes um, and it'll be OK because there's others here. And so by looking at it, all those situations, I actually sort of got myself feeling quite confident, comfortable, not arrogant, not over sure of things, but confident enough that it would be good enough. And I think that's another secret about confidence. It's not about being perfect. None of us are perfect. And lockdown, um, you know, we've all had to learn lots of new skills, um, including Zoom. <laughs> so that's all about being confident and what confidence means. So I'm going to share with you five um, tips just to um, highlight some of the eight ways that you can keep confident. Um, and unlike Joe, I'm afraid I don't have lovely PowerPoint presentation, but I do have a little card, which all it has is, and it doesn't, it reflects, so it doesn't shine too well, but um, it just, this first one says, stay connected. And what we mean by that is to make sure that whether you live on your own or not, you are connecting 
as we go out of lockdown into whatever we are going to face next, that you are connecting with like-minded people, we are sometimes call it our tribe, with like-minded people who share our values and who will support us. They don't have to think the same as us necessarily, but they are people that we can go to for support and advice. I mean, a great example is Galloway's and um, the uh, Lancashire BAME uh, organization, where we know we can go to these people. And it's really, really important that we take advantage of all of this that is there because being in isolation, being on our own, our heads can really screw us up. You know, I'm sure all of you have experienced that thing where at some time or other we start to worry, we start to stress, we start to fret. We look at the what if this happens, you know, the chicken licking kind of the world might end. I mean, let's face it, I saw a really good cartoon. Um, you know how there's always been these pandemic films, the worst case scenario, what if the flu takes over the planet or, or these sci-fi books? <laughs> and somebody, this cartoon said something like, it was an author saying, I'm just rewriting my end of the world novel, but this time it's going to have more baking in it. And I thought, yeah, actually, because that was much more about baking, isn't it? And sort of, well, not necessarily for all of you, for me it was. Um, but it's it's actually the reality of being in a global pandemic. I mean, this is as bad as it's ever got for anything since the plague in the 16th, 15th, 16th, 17th century. So staying connected with people that can help us, but also just that we can just let chat to, have some of our um, fears shared with, is really important for confidence because I think once we get to know that we're not alone and that others think and feel the same, that really helps us to have that knowledge and knowing that yes, we can do it because others are doing it and we don't have to be perfect. And there are lots of opportunities out there. There's lots of groups. If you're on Facebook, um, there are lots of groups there for confidence building. And I'm not just talking about um, uh, with the visually impaired community, but for anybody going through anything, um, whether they have any form of disability or not. Uh, one of the ones I've joined recently is called Subtle Health. Um, it's a Facebook group with about three and a half thousand people in it and people share uh, their concerns and their worries, but also their tips for dealing with things. Another way of staying connected is um, is, is going with um, with podcasts. Um, I, I'm a great lover of the radio. I listen to Radio 4 all the time. I know a lot of people listen to music radio, but podcasts are brilliant. And um, there are lots and lots out there on confidence building and on tips to help you. You'll have all, well, maybe maybe you've heard of Tony Robbins. He's that real sort of positive thinking guru. I hate the word guru, but anyway, um, I think even he calls himself that. Uh, but I don't know. But uh, confidence in podcasts is a really good way. So you can find the podcast to suit you, to give you the tips and support and advice that you need. Uh, there's a very good one called The Good Life Project. And uh, the podcasts there are from people who have either, um, may have disabilities that they're overcoming or they are dealing with very, very challenging life experiences. And there's some really good tips there. So that's stay connected. Second one is pace yourself. And by that, I mean, go at your pace, not at the pace that anybody else is saying. Some people are going to feel really excited to be getting out there again. Um, I know even in, in Lancashire where we are, you know, and we're in tier three, but the shops are open now and some are opening a lot longer. Um, and some people will be really looking forward to getting back out to go and do some shopping, especially before Christmas. Um, and um, uh, others will be feeling really nervous about this because we have been shut down for a long time. Whatever tier we've been in, whatever circumstances since February, March of this year. So it's a very long time. And. The idea of just going back out there, going into a shop, we're not sure, especially if you've got visual impairment, perhaps the shop's layouts have changed slightly, or the, um, they go, you know, are they going to be more crowded? It, 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 there are a lot of anxiety generating 
things that will come for all of us. My son and his girlfriend in London are so looking forward to going shopping in London. To me, it's the very idea of hell. The idea of going down to London now, for example, for Christmas shopping, which I've done in the past and love, no way for a number of reasons, including the fact that I'm not used to being in crowds. I've got out of the habit of that and the stress levels go up. So pace yourself, take it at your own time, whatever you're going to be doing, do not listen to anybody else who's saying, oh, well, you know, you should get out now and do this because it's no good for you. You know better than anybody what is right for your mental, physical and emotional well-being at this stage. But that's not to say that you don't sometimes need to push yourself to overcome perhaps a bit of anxiety or fear, but get support with that as well. So that's pacing yourself. The next one is that when you are going out, it's dealing with overload. Now, what I mean by this is particularly sensory overload because, and particularly obviously with visual impairment, your other senses may well be um, slightly more acute. So when you've got that acuteness and then you're going out into society again a bit more, whether it is just to the shops, whether as the pubs or bars or cafes open, we, we have been not used to having that level of communication coming back at us. So it is really important to deal with that, including that is including traffic. I, you know, if, if you remember back to March when we went into that very first lockdown, I live right next to the M6. And I remember going for a walk and I stood there at two o'clock on a Friday afternoon when normally there's a huge amount of traffic hurtling up to the Lake District and Scotland or whatever. There was the odd lorry, there was um, a couple of delivery vans, and uh, that was about it. It was the quietest I've ever known in 27 years of living here. So we are going to go into sensory, um, sensory overload in the next few months. So again, you need to manage that and deal with it. Um, so in that case, it's about not pushing yourself, not going into um, situations if you're not feeling, or if you start to feel a bit um, anxious, then you just take yourself back out of it. Don't force yourself to stay some in some situation if you're not feeling it's right for you at this moment. As I say, this will apply to everybody. I did a train journey. I had to do some work away last uh, last week, and I've only been on a train once since um, since lockdown. I live on my own, and I've hardly seen anybody over the last few months. And actually going onto the train, being in the train station, there were a lot of people around. Once I got on the train, it wasn't too busy, but actually being around a lot of people in the station, okay, we're all masked up. I felt very anxious and I was having to do that deep breathing that Joe's talking about to manage that anxiety as I was getting on the train and sitting down and then somebody came and um, sat uh, opposite me and I was really backing away and I was having to manage my own response so it's really important that you become aware of your own physical mental emotional response and find ways to deal with it and that then means that if you know the ways to deal with it you will feel more positive and as we've said expecting or hoping for a positive outcome is what confidence is about being able to deal with it so that's dealing with overload. Now this next one is very important. This number four is speak up for yourself. Now this is the general confidence thing and it's not just for um, lockdown, but I've put it in because it's so important. I have done confidence training for over 20 years, um, uh, many, many times with groups of women and many times with um, mixed groups and particularly actually in, in management training and development. And um, what I'm talking about here is assertiveness. It's about being confident to speak your voice, to speak your thoughts, but in a balanced way. So if you can imagine a line and on the left-hand side is passive and on the right-hand side is aggressive, in the middle is what we call being assertive. 
And if we are too passive, we tend to be quiet. We tend to put other people's needs before ours. We may be conflict averse. We may not want you know, anything for a quiet life. So uh, it often happens in relationships, uh, as, as I'm sure we all know. You know, there'll probably perhaps be somebody who is a bit more uh, voicey, a bit louder, and the other person may be the one that keeps a bit quieter. So uh, in, in the definition of passive, it is you put other people's needs before yours. Now that may well be for a very good reason. It could well be because you're feeling, well, you know, uh, I think it's really important. It's nice for them to have their voice and I'm, I'm quite happy back here. That's OK. But what happens is if you keep it inside and keep it inside, <laughs> sometimes there can be that flare up which can take others by surprise because you've been bottling it up. On the other side is aggressive and aggressive is the side where you put your own needs before others. And this can often be where uh, we get trigger points in conflict. And, um, and I recognize that there's a lot of cultural differences that can be here. So I'm not talking about this from a cultural point of view specifically, but recognizing that culturally, um, as, as happened in the past in history for women and men, um, culturally, there could well be that it, you know voices are quieter on one side than the other. But a healthy way and a confident way of communicating is to be assertive. And being assertive isn't about being loudmouthed or bossy. Assertiveness is about you take your views and the other person's views into account, and then you speak. So it's about recognizing that everybody has their own opinion, but yours is as valid as others. So passive is when you um, put your feelings after others. So in other words, you put other feelings before yours. Aggressive is where you put your own feelings before others. And assertiveness is where you take your own feelings and those of others into account. And of course, it is the place where compromise sits. And actually being confident is about looking into both sides of a situation and then being able to say da 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 da. So if we take the example of where you're going out and perhaps, um, and Saima used this example um, um, uh, when we were talking a couple of weeks ago, where perhaps if you are visually impaired and then you are using your phone in public and somebody comes up and sort of says, well, you know, um, I thought you were, you know, I thought you were blind and how come you're using a phone kind of thing. Um, and it's that just that assertiveness that is recognizing that whatever they're coming from, your own views are equally valid and being able to say, well, yes, I'm, I can understand why you might think that. But actually, as you can see, there's no screen on it. Um, I'm just using it for voice activation or whatever is the answer. But it's that balance. So being confident is being assertive. It's being able to speak up for yourself and also for others in a calm and clear way. And finally, we've got the final one here, which is focus on the now. Worry and stress are huge detractors from feeling confident because worry and stress means that we think that the worst could happen. And um, very often it's important to just look at now and not think, oh my goodness, you know, if I go out, this will happen and that will happen. Um, and then this will da 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 and start to spiral down. Focusing on the now is okay saying, okay, I'm feeling okay now. I'm now looking at what might happen if and how I might deal with that, using that breathing technique. And then when you're totally in the now, then moving forward into the next step of the now, which might be going to the front door. And the next step of the now is going out of the door and then taking in, going into the shop or whatever it is. But um, uh, on the course that I run with on confidence building, we look a lot at mindfulness, which is very much about being in the now. And being in the now is now, and 30 seconds ago when I said it, is now the past. So the final thing, as I say, is to focus on the now. So those five tips are to stay connected with your group, with the people that uh, you feel comfortable with, and to share and to get advice and support. 
to pace yourself to do things at the right pace and steps for you. Never mind what anybody else says, you know yourself best. Deal with overload, recognize that you will get sensory overload and just have, have techniques and tools and tips to manage that. Be able to speak up for yourself in a calm and confident, assertive way that takes into account everybody's feelings and issues. And finally, to focus on the now as things are at this moment and don't try and project too far forward, but just taking those slow, slow, steady steps, which we're all going to be doing at different speeds over the next few months. So I hope that's helped you, uh, given you a few more ideas about confidence. And uh, I will pass now back over to, well, I don't know who I'm passing over to. Is it Jackie or Stuart? It's me. <laughs> Jackie, okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Zoe. I thought that was absolutely wonderful. Again, um, hope you've got some useful tips there. There's so much to take in, actually. Um, and we have recorded this so you can listen to it again um, if you want to be reminded I think it, it'll be a great it'll be a, like a podcast that you can play whenever you need it um, because we have to work on ourselves every single day I know I know I do I'm a well-being manager um, I don't wake up and cartwheel um, down for breakfast um, I have to actually work on myself and like we all do and we all have to be accountable for our own health and our own well-being and our own mental well-being um so i just want to do a little exercise about focusing on um i normally say five senses but actually um being visually impaired your senses are senses are heightened so we'll focus on four senses so i want you to imagine um a staircase and um all the things that we've talked about today, um, I want you to think about setting goals, little baby steps, and you're climbing up to, uh, and the top of that goal is right at the top of that staircase. Whatever you want at that staircase, could be, uh, could be anything, um, you know, you want you to visualize that and actually set goals every day so you can do a little bit more to get there. So, and don't beat yourself up if, if, if you know, if you're not feeling great one day, but just, you know, just set those goals yourself, your personal goals, and they have to be small. Um, I call it little chunking. Um, there's big chunking and little chunking, but we have to focus on the little chunks to get yourself to the top of those stairs. So as you're going on that journey and setting those goals, um, just focus on the now, as Zoe uh, talked about, but focus on what you can feel, what you can touch. How does that feel? We take everything for granted, don't we, really? Um, but, you know, those those wonderful feelings when you touch something, something nice, how, you know, how does that make you feel when, when you touch something? Uh, the smell. So I use um, aromatherapy oils, um, which really help. And I've got a lovely one at the moment, and it's cinnamon, um, because I, li I like it for Christmas. But it, cinnamon is very uplifting. Um, oranges as well, also bergamot. There's lots of different oils um, you can burn or you can, um, you can put them in a purifier as well. Um, or just dab a little bit of oil on your wrist and, and smell it. It's just uplifting. Something that simple um, can make the difference um, in your mood. Um, and I think these things are really important. So you've got touch and you've got you've got smell and um it's what you hear as well what 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 is the nice things that you like to listen to could be music could be your favorite music um make sure you know you've got a, a, a list of music that you could easy access uh, that makes you feel uplifted yeah um or you know just the, the sound of children laughing or people laughing um you know be around as many people as you can that make you feel good when you're listening to them. Um, you know, it might be just people people chattering, um, you know. Something that makes me um, feel good is taste. <laughs> usually chocolate um but actually it could be anything anything um you know or something healthy would be really good um 
I love carrot sticks and salsa, you know, that really strong taste uh, of hot salsa. I mean, that's healthy. So you could always have, make sure you have like chopped carrots or chopped cucumber that you can taste it. Those things, all those senses, you're stimulating them, um, which will, will kick off those fantastic good chemicals that we talked about. Um, so that's just a little exercise. And like I say, you're climbing up those steps slowly, slowly. Um, and remember, it's all about you. It's all about you. And don't feel guilty about that. So many do people, so many people feel guilty about focusing on ourselves. But if you're not feeling good, then you know, um, it's it's like a knock-on effect. It, it doesn't make other people feel good as well. Um, so um, be accountable, focus on yourself and, and, and use all these tools um, that we talked about today. And it's all about being your own well-being champion. So we have, um, I'm not sure if it's Simon or Stuart that's going to uh, talk through the top 10 tips today uh, from Galloway, um, which will really help you make those moves, make those small moves of getting outside. We talked about that. Um, one of the, the things we've identified with COVID is that the lack of vitamin D. So if you're not taking supplements, um, then you, we need to get outside as much as possible. Not easy in winter, but actually if we wrap up warm, um, it can make you feel good. Just being out in the fresh air for five, 10 minutes is good. So Stuart, if you'd like to talk um, through your top 10 tips. Thanks, Jackie. Um, do I have to share me? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jackie. It's me and Simon that are delivering the top 10, uh, top 10 tips. Uh, thank you so much for the advice, techniques and strategies. I think it's really going to benefit people. Uh, and me and Simon sort of discussed and worked out that, you know, some practical advice on getting out and about. So the third thing is, if you need support, contact Galloway's. My, my role is I'm a, I'm a community site loss advisor. Uh, I can go out and support people, whether it's just walking around the block or visiting the local shop. Or there's other sort of uh, services out there, uh, such as guide dogs. And I'll let Simon dis uh, discuss uh, what guide dogs are offering. Simon? Yeah, oh, sorry, I thought you were going to do the whole top 10 first. No. And then <laughs> yeah, all right, sorry. You call me off guard then. <laughs> were you sn uh, snoozing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, um, no, um, just for those that don't know, uh, I am visually impaired as well, having lost my sight as a teenager. So I can understand all the anxiety that's built up during the lockdown uh, and the reason why we need this confidence building exercise happening today. Um, so basically, uh, my guide is something that um, Guide Dogs is offering at the moment for visually impaired blind people in the community. And what they've done is um, they've asked friends and family of either visually impaired or blind people, or not necessarily friends and family, even if it's somebody that wants to volunteer to sign up with them. They've been fully vetted, DBS checked, and they've also been trained in sighted guide um, assistance. So what you can do as a user, uh, if you feel that you need somebody to just have that walk in the park, uh, to go and do some daily exercise, visit the gym, et cetera, and you haven't got a family member or a friend to rely on, you can contact the MyGuide service. You will be introduced to a MyGuide partner under the supervision of the MyGuide team. And then depending on how you get along, yeah, you'll obviously have your um, visit kind of going out you can have a couple of visits. If you feel it's not going well, you can feed that back to the MyGuide team and they can change the person that's working with you. Uh, and if, if it's working, you know, one of the main objectives is to try and find new friends. So, you know, if it's working, then excellent. If it isn't, they can find you somebody else that's more suitable. So this is a national program. And the main objectives of this are to kind of improve your confidence to give you better independence, uh, to allow you to make new friends, to enjoy activities in the community that you, you wouldn't be able to do on your own, and just getting out of the house. So it is, you know, um, fully set out to try and help us get out of, you know, after the lockdown. You can contact the MyGuide team on 0345 143 0229. 
You can also email them on myguide at guidedogs.org.uk and you can also go on the Guide Dogs website to read more about it. There's a few case studies on there of uh, visually impaired and blind people that wanted to use the service. That's brilliant, that Simon. Thank you very, very much. So uh, we just uh, we got a, a few top tips here for you. So if you need support, obviously contact Galloways, and I'll give you uh, the email address, telephone numbers, and web pages of both Galloways and Lancashire Bay Network at the end. Uh, we might refer you to uh, guide dogs, or number two, if you've got a friend, buddy up, or a relative. Uh, number three, if you're using a long cane. Uh, use a use a sighted guide for the first outing so just a little bit of support for the first time you're going out use your symbol cane if you have one or contact us if you need one uh, obviously with the restrictions now and uh, the two meter rule it's difficult and the symbol cane does help other people recognize that maybe you might need some support or maybe uh, if you're in a shop they might offer some help uh, number five go out in daylight uh, number six, know your route. Small steps, make the, make the route short at first to build your confidence. And number seven, only do what you're comfortable with. If you feel like turning back halfway, that's, that's fine. Number eight, take your phone. And number nine, ask for help. With with Joe uh, and Zoe have discussed today about being assertive. If you need help in shops, ask for it. Uh, because in a lot of shops now that you know the, the layout might be different than you used to so ask for ask for help from some staff and number 10 once you've done your short journey uh just record how you feel and then the next time you can go out you can sort of you know uh, go back and see how see if see if the things have improved uh well, today has been an absolutely fantastic session but I'd like to thank everybody um I th Thanks for Jackie and the Lancashire Bay Network and uh, for Zoe and Joe, some fantastic uh, advice and uh, support techniques and strategies. Thanks for Simon. Uh, and I'd like to thank the James Tudor Trust uh, for, for supporting Galloways. And if anyone else would like to join the sort of the, the Galloways BAME uh, focus group, please contact us. Uh, we'd we'll be welcoming you with open arms uh, because we want, we, we, we're committed about to supporting people and uh, we've recognised that, that, you know, the uh, BAME community is underrepresented within support. So please contact us. Uh, so the Galloway's uh, web address is www.galloways.org.uk and the telephone number is 01772. 744-148 or you can email us on enquiries at galloways.org.uk we've also got Lancashire Bay Network please contact them uh, their web address is www.lancashirebaynetwork.org.uk and the telephone number is 01254 392 974 or you could email them on referrals at lancashirebaynetwork.org.uk obviously this is being recorded so you can uh, listen back and uh, get the information and contact us so thanks again uh, fantastic day uh, and look after Stuart, yourself sorry and, Stuart can we yeah. just see if, there's any, if there are any questions if, yes of course have, sorry mate I don't know if anybody has but if there are any questions before we finish. Yeah, please shout out if uh, anybody wants to ask any questions. No? no. Okay. Nope. <laughs> right. um, on our part, Lancashire BME, uh, like I say, we're going to have lots of courses in January. Um, please, please contact us. Um, you know, there's lots of things we can do. Um, I know uh, David uh, Anderson, you run your own um uh, association for for the for the blind so or visually impaired um you know if you want uh, to put on a course for example we can always look at things like that um, we just want to help really and uh, in any way that we can and um, please don't be afraid to ask there's always someone that we know if we can't do it we know somebody that can that's for sure um thank you um to galloway stewart and simon who were fabulous and obviously zoe and joe who've delivered a fantastic session today um i think it's been fantastic thank you very much
Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B